Hello and welcome to the Warcraft Weekly for the 16th of January, the show that brings you all the latest information about World of Warcraft and both within the game and the community around it. In this week's episode, a quick look at what's happening this week, including the Mythic Plus Affix forecast and any in-game events that are occurring. We'll take a look at the Azerothian archives and the follower dungeons from the patch that's coming out next week. There's a new Reddit meme trend on the loose that's sure to make you smile, and we'll finish by revealing the winner of the Transmog of the Week event this week, with details on how you can get involved yourself. First up, the in-game news. What is currently going on? So first off, here's the Mythic Plus forecast. Affixes this week will be tyrannical, so beware of those extra spicy bosses. Keys 7 and above will also have afflicted, so every so often one or two afflicted souls will spawn and start casting afflicted cry. If this spell gets cast, then you are going to be crying yourself as well, because the haste of your party will be reduced by 100%, likely leading to a wipe and extra tears. Leading to another wipe when you eventually wipe the tears from your face, y you get the idea now. To combat this affix, you either need to heal the afflicted soul to full, then it'll go away all happy or you can simply cast any dispel on it no not this spell not that spell a, a dispel the second additional affix of the week is bolstering so every time a mob dies they're going to let out another cry it is indeed the week of tears now this bolstering cry will buff the other mobs around it with a 20 percent damage and health buff only the ones that are in combat though. Now this can stack pretty high, but do remember that it is a nerfed version from what we previously had in the game. It used to just last forever, as long as a mob stayed in combat, but this does now have a 20 second duration. If you pull a trash mob into a boss encounter, then the trash can bolster the boss, which you definitely do not want to happen, with it being tyrannical as well. So just make sure you get that mob far away to kill it, 30 yards plus is fine. Apparently, the maximum stacks you can get of the bolstering buff is 31, so 620% more health and damage. I think you should try that one yourself just for the fun. Your pug group will love you for it. Okay, so what is this week's main event? It is the Arena Skirmish Bonus Event. So arenas will award bonus honor, basically. There should be a quest you can pick up to complete 10 arena skirmishes, and that's pretty much it. So for the roughly 7 or 8 people in the world that currently play arenas, I hope you have a fantastic time this week. The PvP brawl for the week is the Temple of Hot Mogu. No, no, don't get excited, it isn't a Temple of Hot Mogu, it's all one word, Hot Mogu. So as is usually the script with these PvP brawls, this is the normal battleground, the Temple of Kot Mogu, but with a twist. It's Temple of Kot Mogu, but fast. Haste, movement speed are both increased, and respawn times are decreased to 5 seconds. The big difference is with the orbs, is that you can actually now throw them to a friendly player with the extra action button, so do make use of that if you're getting focused down and you're about to die, which is extremely likely, or to just throw the enemy team off for a short time, tossing the ball around or wherever you want. This could be very useful if you're getting focused down in the middle of the map, the little sunken down area, if you throw the ball to an ally who's on the top level, because then of course the enemies are going to have to run around. If you're going to give this a go, then do remember to pick up the weekly quest that's called Something Different, which requires you to win one PvP Brawl Battleground, and then you'll get some bonus honour and conquest for doing that. In other news, we have a new 6 month subscription bundle mount on offer, which if you already have a 6 or 12 month rolling subscription, you'll automatically get this. The Auspicious Arbor Worm, which is the new Lunar New Year mount. It uses the Winding Sliver Drake skeleton, and it's kind of a weird mix of wood and flesh. If you think too much about this, it's very weird. But the mount looks fairly okay, I don't know, it's a bit of a weird one. But either way, it's another plus one to the mount collection, and that's always a win in my book. Now we've also got the Outland Cup, which is starting. This is going to go live on the 18th of January till the 31st. You can get the new Outlandish Drake Rider armor set for this. And there's two new tabards, the white and gold version and the red and white one as well. Now personally, I'm not really a fan of the Transmog set, but the tabards themselves are quite nice. But you do have to earn the gold achievement for each of the races to get the ruby tabard. There are some more dragon riding customizations to unlock as well, and also the Manuscript of Endless Possibilities, which is basically like the Glyph of the Chameleon that Druids can have for their cat form, for example, which means that every time they go into that cat form, they're going to get a random appearance that they've unlocked, but this time it's to do with your mount, so any time you get on a customizable mount, like a dragon riding mount, for example, it will have random customizations equipped, presumably only the ones that you actually have unlocked. This sounds like it will also apply to the mechanical mount that was teased that's going to come in the war within as well. So hopefully we're going to get more of these customizable mounts and this tome will work for those as well. So if you took part in the Kalimdor or the Eastern Kingdoms Cup, this is just exactly the same but with the races this time occurring all through Outland. 
There's an extra holiday event this week as well. Now, this one is a throwback to one of the most memorable, iconic events to ever happen in World of Warcraft's history. That's right, the time that Magni Bronzebeard became King of Stormwind. We're one step closer to curing Azeroth of her wounds. Get back to work! <coughs> Alright, okay, that didn't really happen, did it? But what did happen was the Call of the Scarab. So we've got the Call of the Scarab holiday event occurring on the 21st of January until the 23rd. So Sunday to Tuesday. This event commemorates the first ringing of the Scarab gong, which happened on the 23rd of January, way back in 2006. We basically get to relive this event and take part in the efforts once again to unlock the gates representing our factions in the Scarab War. And we can do this by gathering supplies and defeating Twilight and Karaji forces in the zone Silithus. You know Silithus, the zone that definitely does not have anything to do with some kind of strange sword that is rumoured to be stuck in the earth. Whichever faction wins this event gets to display their banner next to the Scarab Gong for the rest of the year. There are a couple of mounts that you can get and use while the event is active. These were introduced back in 2018, and it's the Ruby Resonating Crystal for the Horde, and the Blue Sapphire Resonating Crystal for the Alliance, which are higher res versions of the original Kuraji mounts. You can buy these for one Abyssal Crest each, which you can get from killing mobs in Silithus Twilight Camps when the event is active. Do note that these aren't actual proper mounts that will go into your collection, but it's just an item that stays in your bag that you can use while the event's active, lasting for 7 days only. There are also some world quests to complete during the event to help your factions progress. So let's now take a look at the PTR. So we know that patch 10.2.5 is going to launch the week after this on the 16th of January for the US and the 17th of January for everybody else. So not too long to wait for that. A little bit more content has been added to the PTR this week, so I've done some testing of the Azerothian Archives, so let's take a look at what's in store for us there. Now, the Azerothian Archives is a weekly public event that occurs every hour. There's mounts, battle pets, and transmog things as a reward. So I did say weekly event. It does seem that this means you can only get the big initial reward for the first go of the week, but then you do seem to have the option to complete this dig multiple times. So what's it about? I am going to do a more detailed guide coming up on the channel soon, so stay tuned for that. But I'll give you the gist here now. So this is an hourly event. It occurs at half past the hour, so you don't have to choose between this and the time rifts if you're still farming those. Well done Blizzard for doing that because I did think they would forget and it would clash with the time rifts. The big dig itself is very similar to the time rift, whereas you turn up to the event space at the time of the event and basically just run around completing small tasks, doing little errands for the main dig site owner, this undead NPC, and you, the quicker you do it, the more stuff you do, the more progress you get. At the end of the event, a mob spawns, you kill it, <laughs> that's basically game over. There is a currency and a rep associated with this, and the rewards are fairly decent, especially if you like your transmog stuff, but there are two mounts available from this as well, and also eight different achievements you can get from doing the archive activities. Now, you've got the big weekly event, the public event, but there are apparently also smaller solo activities you can complete, more like mini digs around the rest of the Dragon Isles, but these weren't currently testable on the PTR, as I could not get the quests to work to progress through this storyline. So more on that in the actual guide when I can get that together. We've also got the follower dungeons coming up in patch 10.2.5 so how do you even get into those basically you open the dungeon and raid tab go to the dungeon finder and queue up for the follower dungeons these are going to be all eight of the original dragonflight dungeons available on normal difficulty to begin with so what are they you basically go in there it's just you you can queue up with a friend if you've got say another friend or two more friends you can all go in there together and you'll have a, however many npcs you need to fill up your party to five people if you go in as dps you will get a tank and a healer and two other npcs that are dps so you can do any role for these you can also control the npcs to the point where you can decide if you want them to lead and they will do that for you or if you want to lead it yourself so you the one that initiates combat now you do have to do the dungeon tasks yourself so you can't just zone in and let the npcs lead and clear the dungeon for you and you get loads of xp and things you still do have to actually participate so that would mean doing things like freeing the tuscar captives if you're doing brackenhide hollow or taking the dragon port up if you're doing the ruby life pools so you can get loot from these of course it is only on normal but it's decent if maybe you're leveling up or you know you've got a very undergeared character potentially could be a decent way to level up as well if the xp is all right but i think the major benefit from this is it gives people a proper chance to try out different roles and different specs in a dungeon setting without the pressure of other players who would never even think of being horrible to another player in the game would they would they 
So yeah, it can be quite daunting to step into dungeons with others for the first time when you're either new or trying a new role, or just simply haven't done dungeons before and want to take a look at all the mechanics. So I do think this is quite a good addition to the game, which will hopefully help people, you know, have the confidence boosted and get them ready for taking on things like heroic dungeons and then eventually mythics. So come and join me as we pop into Community Corner. So there was a bit of a vault going on this week where we could choose our own Warcraft tier set for Season 4. Now, as we know, Season 4 is going to bring a fated version of the raids, the Dragonflight raids. So we're going to be going through them all on presumably a cycle. Now what we can do with this vault is choose which tier set appearance we want for each class and then we could also choose which tier bonus we want for each spec out of all the three that have currently come so far in the expansion. Now the time this video goes out, the voting will have closed just now, so we should be able to look back right now and check which ones are actually got for Season 4. I think personally, it would have been cool to let every player choose their own individually when they get the gear in Season 4, so they could maybe get a token item and take that to a vendor, and then choose from each three of the tier sets and the appearances, but I know this would have likely been a pretty big technical and balancing nightmare for Blizzard, so I do understand, but a few other players did echo my thoughts on the forum post as well. So from Reddit, we have this screenshot of the Forsaken seemingly blight bombing Gilneas. Now we know we're going to have the Reclamation of Gilneas questline, and it's been kept quite secret, so we have no idea exactly what's going to go on in that. But this screenshot has sparked some discussion about the lore, and why exactly the Forsaken will be bombing with blight again. You know, the Forsaken Council formed and seemingly wanted to move the undead to a bit of a better place. Uh, let's just say from the rather particularly sketchy past, but, you know, if they're still blight bombing everywhere, then I guess Forsaken are just doing Forsaken things. But perhaps they're, you know, just using the blight against the Scarlet, which we assume are going to be currently occupying Gilneas. But we'll find out when the patch goes live, I guess. There was some decent discussion about the lore in this thread, so I'll link that in the description below. Now, every so often on Reddit, somebody makes a post in a particular style that then sets off other editors to kind of mimic the style and keep the fun times going. Now, this week the format was... Something is actually kind of terrifying when you remember how big they are compared to something. So for this one, I think the original post that kicked this off was Pandaren are actually kind of terrifying when you remember how big they are compared to humans. Now this was the post, you know, fairly simple, a nice bit of fluff. But then somebody followed with this, we had Kul'Tirans versus humans, and then we had Warlocks and their demons, and then we had Khadgar against humans, and then we had actual Poo against humans and then we had titans humans versus humans some guy's cat and then deathwing versus buildings i did get a good chuckle out of some of these so well done reddit for being your reddit selves now time for the final section the transmog of the week for the last time because we're going to change things up now i appreciate so much the effort that you guys put into getting these transmogs submitted for the week and i appreciate a week isn't a very long time so let's try something new we're going to go for transmog of the month and we're also going to throw in a prize as well the prize will be 10 great british pounds of battle.net balance which equates to around 13 us dollars to spend on whatever you want from the blizzard store so that's where we will begin once every month and then as time goes on we'll see if this thing grows and more and more people take part i'll also be able to increase the prizes so how do you take part each month i will set a theme then if you head over to our discord channel lazy beasts and get yourself verified by accepting the rules if you go into the world of warcraft category head down to transmog of the month and there you will find a forum style post for that particular month with details on the theme and also rules on submission one of the rules there will be that we do need to see an item list of what transmogs you are currently using with the character so the easiest way to do this is to get the narcissus add-on install that have a little play around with it there is an option there when you're in photo mode to display the items nice and clearly if you have any questions or struggle with that, then please do pop into the Discord and we'll help you get your submission sorted and answer any questions. Okay, so that's for the changes. Now, if you're concerned about the Transmog of the Week going away from this segment, don't worry. What we will likely still do is visit the submissions that have occurred so far, discuss some of the Transmogs and see how everybody is getting on. And you never know, there may even be room for a brand new segment. So the way that the Transmog of the Month is going to work for January, of course, we're halfway through. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a shorter Transmog of the Month this month. So we've got two weeks. I will announce the winner of the Transmog of the Month for January on the 30th of this month. So do join us in Discord and I'll keep everybody updated on details of when the last submission date is and also when the winner has been chosen. Because this is the first Transmog of the Month, 
the theme is going to be free for all. So go nuts, do whatever you want, show us your absolute best transmog, and good luck everybody. So without further ado, let's take a look at what was the final transmog of the week for the previous week just gone. So kicking us off at the beginning was Film the Dead with this lovely fiery sort of demon mage looking thing going on here. So making good use of the Diablo 4 mount from the promotion when that came out. And I've got a bit of a soft spot for these Firelands kind of sets. I love, I'm a bit of a pyro guy, you know. It all works together very nicely. This was a very solid start from Film the Dead. Next to submit was Megiga, winner of last week's transmog of the week. Three times in a row now, such a good set already. And in the set as well, very thematic of this week. I don't know if you did that intentionally, but very clever if you did. Already sitting there at the Scarab Gong. A clever mixture of some of the really older models of the sets and some of the newer ones as well. I think the mask there is from Mr. Pandaria. The swords from Battle for Azeroth and the legs are definitely some of the older sets. And I think that, so are the feet as well. Actually, all traction, cat cataclysm. Dragon Soul. So yeah, another very good solid effort there. Next we have the submission from Goat. Now Goat very nearly got Transmog of the Week last time with the Drunken Mess Transmog, which I still love. This week coming in strong with the Volpera Outcast guy. We got Bone here. Little warrior Volpera that does not take any crap by the looks of things. What I like about this one is you can see the effect on the shoulder there, which is two different shoulder pieces going on, which actually I didn't realise straight away. Now that's that's Sometimes hard to pull off in and of itself, but also the weapon transmog there on the left hand weapon if you're looking at Bone's perspective The glows on those things match quite nicely and it perfectly ties in with the glow on the shoulder as well And even so the hair on the skull mask as well. It's kind of the same color So even though these are items from pretty much all different sets it, it just ties together so nicely well done mate then we had a resubmission from Magiga. Now, I am going to have to accept the first one. Now, that is going to be one of the rules going forward with these Transmog of the Months. Just one submission per person, and we can't change our minds either. But the mount, I do appreciate that is an upgraded mount as well. The gold and the blue, it's just spot on, mate. Well done with that. And then we have a new submission for this week from some sarcasm. So, this paladin, holy moly. I mean, quite literally. These colours, I mean, this is something that you don't really usually see. A, a dress... You know, plate wearer with a big ass sword and a mount. The, the mount is, it just goes together. What can I say? Now, this is the copper scarab that came from the trading post a little while back. The fact this set is pretty different and the way that it does pretty much perfectly match the mount, another top notch set. And next we had Risky with his warrior. Now, another set where we're using two different shoulder plates that just work quite nice together. And then the weapons as well. So you've got the, the red side, the kind of fiery side, and the bluey sort of icy side. Or I guess it would be more kind of death magic. What I liked about this one in particular was the fact that the plate, the chest, and the legs, there's kind of a red tint at the top and a blue at the bottom. So you're basically playing off that and expanding that throughout the rest of the set, which I thought was very creative. Then we had the submission from Lord Wellington. So... A lovely bit of, you know, purpley rogue going on. Now, this, this rogue set with the chest, the legs, and the helmet, I love that set. That I had my rogue recently leveling up uh, a new rogue, and I had him in that set going forward with the shoulders of the Sata. But enough about me, this is about Lord Wellington. Now, I do like the fact that you've mixed these two sets together. Uh, it is it is a mixture of two sets. There's pretty much half and half going on here. It kind of gives me ethereal vibes. Now, ethereals, as we know, are like the trader guys in Warcraft. And the mount pretty much fits that style as well, because you'd imagine this Elec carrying around wares and things. So Lord Wellington, I like your style, mate. Keep it up. Then we had Cardi on his priest, riding the Soul Aspire Hawk, a mount that I still haven't got, so you lose because I'm jealous. I'm just kidding. And the set that you've gone for is very interesting. So there's actually three kind of main colours going on here. We've got the orange, which is the most prominent colour, and the green of the tabard, and the look at look at how well the tabard goes with the skirt of the dress as well. Like the greens are going on there. So another example of where you've matched the tabard to the bottom of the set, which is a different piece, like perfectly well. Got the waste of time belt and the wristwatch going on from the trading post. So definitely know exactly what time it is all of the time. Showing off the legendary Valonir as well. Very nice set overall, mate. Next up, we had Rimian with this Draconic Wanderer. Now, it's kind of like a low fantasy transmog. I love the kind of chill vibes that we're going for here with the browns and the greens perfectly matching the environment that you've gone for there in the background and a lovely simple horse as well for the mount you can't beat simplicity at times and what i really like about this set is the fact that the belt has got some useful tools on there as does the mount with his you know his straps and his pouches and pockets and things full of what i would assume to be very useful items that you've taken out there for your travels for the day or however long you're going for and finally we have manders and this submission makes me think traveling mystical monk 
I do enjoy the fact that you've got the gold tattoos there from the Zandalari. They flow down the arms perfectly into the leggings, which obviously are not part of the tattoos, but it just matches so nice. Which also blends in with the gold on the mount as well. It's just brilliant. And again, another mount I haven't got. So again, you just you disqualify because I'm jealous. And that is just the way it is. I am of course joking, so nonsense aside. I hear your shouts of lazy beast, just cut the fluff man and tell us who won the damn competition. Guys, another incredibly close one. This was very difficult to decide. Now I'll tell you who came second. Second was some sarcasm with the purple paladin set. The only thing that swayed it for me with this set is that the shoulders I didn't feel perfectly fit in. With some different shoulders or perhaps even no shoulders, maybe it would have been the winner. But with that said, I do see why you chose them because it does kind of match with the top of the sword. So the winner of this week's Transmog of the Week is Mr. Goat with his lovely bone Volpera. Now what I like about this is, of course the mount matches perfectly, which was the main theme of the week, but with the Transmog itself, you've managed to incorporate bone in pretty much every element of the Transmog, which is some special kind of effort. And as you said in Discord, even the name is Bone. So there you go. Winner of Transmog of the Week. Thank you so much, guys, for all of your submissions. I do, like I say, I really, really do appreciate the effort that you've put in to just make the Transmogs themselves and stick to the theme and also to go and get backgrounds as well that match with what you're currently doing. I appreciate it so much. I wouldn't have been surprised if nobody even took part in these whatsoever because currently, as you know, there have been no prizes other than a bit of XP in the server, which doesn't really get us anything, does it? Let's be honest. So yeah, guys, thanks so much for taking part and I hope that you want to take part in the next ones as well where prizes are indeed on the table. So guys, thank you so much for watching and for all your continuing support. I appreciate you immensely. If you've enjoyed this video, please do leave it a like and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already done so to receive all the content from me, including guides and of course this Warcraft Weekly continuing as we go. Have a good week guys, take care and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.